Hello and welcome to Great Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how I made these chip rails for my homemade crafts table um, out of just some easy uh, pieces that you can get from your hardware store uh, locally without having to buy the expensive uh, pre-routed chip rails or the equipment to make the chip rails yourself. Uh, basically, I didn't want to pay the $45 for a specialized router bit that's that big. And uh, although I have a router already, I would have had to buy another router because the shank on that bit is larger than the shank size on the router that I have. So I didn't want to spend the extra uh, money on buying a router and then all the time to route all of them out of uh, one buy or whatever. And I also didn't want to spend... Uh, the amount that they are online. Online, they're uh, about $20 to $25 a foot for a one-foot section of a double rail. Um, and that can get to be kind of expensive, a little more money that I wanted to spend on this project. So um, the solution I came up with is um, Cove. Uh, just It's just, uh, I think it's called quarter round or Cove um, molding. Uh, you can find it in your local hardware store. Uh, it comes in usually eight foot sections. Um, so a little bit of uh, wandering down the molding aisle and finding the right stuff uh, and then purchasing the right amount of it and nice uh, kind of eyeball the sections and make sure you got nice straight ones. Uh, this is just pine, it's just unfinished pine. And what, we, uh, what we're gonna do is um, we are going to cut it on a miter saw. Uh, if you don't have a miter saw, then you can probably do a jig with a uh, for your circular saw if you've got one of those, or just borrow one from a friend. Um, if you're doing a project like this, hopefully you would have some of those basic tools to use and everything anyway. You really want to use a miter saw because these these uh, cuts need to be pretty uh, well fitted, and so. Uh, that that's the best way to make sure you get nice straight cuts with the is with the miter saw so <clears throat> these uh, on my particular table here um, I just took some masking tape and taped together a nice uh, 80 roll of, uh, of chips so they'll be sized for my chips and uh, that gives me a little bit of weight to use when I'm gluing them down and it also gives me uh, the, the gauge to set the spacing uh, so all you're doing is taking two of them and opposing them and getting the spacing at the right angle or uh, right amount, uh, basically to just fit the chips right in there just like it would on a normal chip rail. So pretty neat solution. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll walk you through how I glue them down over on the other side. I already got this side finished. Uh, piece of oak just oak trim piece in the middle. On my table, I've just got some uh, reclaimed um, one by two-ish uh, for the outer pieces of the, the uh, chip rail. And eventually I'll add some padding to this edge here. I didn't want a lot of, of heavy extra padding like you see on most tables. I just wanted a small padding. So I got a pretty neat solution for that. I'll show you in a later video. Um, uh, pretty much pretty easy to do and we'll get right to it so <clears throat> as you're cutting these on the miter saw um, what I did to make sure everything gets the, the same exact length on them is I just used masking tape to tape them together uh, back to back and then a whole row uh, originally since these are going to be double, uh, tape them together on the back as well. Now they're untaped now, but uh, that's how I did it when I, I, I cut them on the, on the miter. And then uh, I just used, uh, I got my spacing here and got my measurements down uh, for what I wanted them to be. And then just sort of slid it up there and marked it. And I actually used the tape uh, to mark where my saw blade needed to go. 
because I didn't want to use any uh, a pencil or, or any any kind of marking on this because I'm going to stain these later. So I didn't want to have to sand the pencil marks off or anything like that. So just tape for the straight line and then put it on your miter saw and right on it. Uh, careful and uh, it comes out pretty well. When you're done with everything, make sure you dry fit. And so that's kind of what I have going here is uh, a nice dry fit on everything. Uh, my spacer is just, I had some scrap oak from another project. Uh, nice oak. Um, and I, I kind of ripped it down to get it pretty close to the same width as the uh, sideboards. Uh, I kind of over overdid it, but that's okay. I, I kind of actually like this little dip down here. And when I'm done, I'll end up sanding the, the corners of these down so that they sort of flush in with, with this piece here. Um, but that's what I've got. And I like the, uh, everything's gonna get stained like a red mahogany when I'm done. That's the color I've, I've chose for this. Um, so I, I, I like the idea of the contrast that this will have between the pine and uh, the oak and the, the pieces of the, the ply underneath, which I believe is a, a birch veneer. So, um, should turn out pretty nice. So, um, now that we've got these all cut and dry fitted, we're just gonna go ahead and take the tape off. A um, few things you wanna have ready. Uh, you wanna have a, a nice damp paper towel, not too wet or saturated, just a damp one, and uh, something with kind of an edge to it. Uh, as you're gluing these up, you are gonna get some, some glue press out from underneath. And you don't want that on the surfaces that are gonna end up being stained because the stain will not penetrate the, the glue after it's dried. Um, so that damp paper towel uh, helps you to kind of get that glue off of there as you are um, going through everything. And uh, make sure you, you get a nice clean surface so later, uh, when you go to stain everything up, it, uh, the stain comes out as it should. So <clears throat> we're just gonna put the rest of these off to the side for now. Um, keep my opposing one, set these over here, and we'll get right to the first one. So we're just gonna run a thin Not too much, you don't want a lot of bleed out on it. And I, I may later change my mind and decide that I want the, the real chip rails. And so I'm not putting any nails or anything into this. I'm just gluing everything down. I can always uh, take a putty knife later. And since I'm not using a ton of glue here, I can just pop these off of here and um, recut the actual rails to the sizes that I need and then glue those down. Um, they'll go over the top of everything so if there's any stain differences or anything like that that'll do pretty well to hide that and we'll be okay. So just Press down and uh, it's kind of odd. You can't, you can't use clamps. Normally I would clamp when I'm gluing, um, but you can't really use clamps because of the odd shape and the, the distance I have, the clamps that I have available don't quite get over here. So, um, plus I don't want a super strong hold on these. I just want them to hold well enough for some decent play. Um, like I said, I, I may take them up later. So, um, for now, we're just gonna kinda hold and get a, a nice set in. This first one uh, is backed up to the, the board here and in the corner, so it's not really going anywhere. Um, I just pressed down pretty good to get uh, any glue squeezed out that's gonna squeeze out. And this is where the, the knife or a, a, a pen or something, something without a marking edge to it, is gonna come in handy because you can really get down in there. You get that in, napkin or towel down in there and get it so you don't have a line of glue there. Uh, if you go too too damp on it, the 
water gets underneath the piece of wood and then disrupts your glue and they you know, have to wipe everything off and do it over again. So um, next what we're going to do is take a couple of, uh, I got these blue chips that uh, I don't, I'm not sure anybody ever uses these. If you, if you buy the, the set, uh, blue's not really a standard color. I think they're 50s, but you, you don't see them a lot. So I, I, I still have these wrapped. And if I didn't, I would just uh, lightly tape some up, um, just 20 rolls. Um, uh, what you're going to use these for is to get your spacing initially. Uh, these are a little easier to work with uh, than this big uh, 80 roll here. And so um, we'll use that in a minute to, to try to get some weight um, as one of the things to hold down as we progress here. So let's go to my next one and go ahead and put a bead on it as well and I got a little more than I would like to there so we're gonna I'm doing this on with my layout there so I got another napkin so I don't get glue on my layout um, and I could go ahead and since I got some extra there I'm gonna kind of cheat here and put these back to back so I'm actually going to lay the next two sort of at the same time. You just got to be patient with it. You end up getting glue everywhere anyway, but uh, less is, is more in this case. So, so I've got those sort of preliminarily back to back. I prefer to do them one at a time, but we'll go ahead and run a thin bead down both of these. Not too, too heavy. And then go ahead and get it set. Kind of eyeball where I want it. Do a nice press out and I'm squeezing the two of these together because you get some some press out from in between as well and I've done enough of these now doing the other corner there that I worked on previously I showed you at the beginning uh, where I kind of have a good eyeball for where the distance is between them to get the right spacing to put your chip in there so we'll do that and that's a little wider than i want we don't want it to go all the way to the bottom we want it to sort of sit up there so i'm just going to pull them together and this first one is really important because you're gonna the next row over you're gonna try and line it up as well so um you want to make sure you get it pretty correct so we're just pulling it in until we're comfortable with where it's supposed to sit and then push down and just hold for a minute. I'm going to take a look at it from the side. Still not quite happy with where it is. It's a little wider than I want it to be. And you, if you tape these, you don't want to add too much tape because then that's going to add a little bit of width to your chip size. And your chips aren't going to sit in there as snug as they should. So I think that's pretty well where we want it. Now you could also use a spacer in here. Um, I decided not to do that. When I did the sort of prototype of these, I did that and my spacer kept getting stuck. 
uh, to the, with the glue and everything. So um, I decided against that when I do the actuals. So nap, get this nap down a little. My first one's already got too much glue on it to handle this. I've got quite a bit from where I slid it over. Just patience and time. Take your time, get it right. Not too much moisture in there or bleed under and ruin your glue. Press them up nice and tight. You got to be careful when you set these in because you can push them to where they're a little wider. They do move quite easily until you you get the glue to set some. Check them again, and the the circumference isn't exact, um, but it's. It's good enough to where uh, the chips will sit in there pretty snug and not fall over or fall out. Now the other thing you do is, is slide one back and forth and you'll be able to feel if you've got one end tighter than the other and then adjust accordingly. So we're gonna we're gonna call that good on that one. We'll just Triple check to make sure I don't have any glue residue down there. If I can do that without moving the wood. And then at this point, I will go ahead and glue this guy down. Ugh. I have to be careful. I just... Flip the piece of wood there and offset it. Okay. So, same deal. Just a thin bead of glue on there. Don't go all the way to the end because you're going to get some push out. And even as uh, precisely as I cut these, I still have a little bit of gapping going on. I think I didn't quite get that sucker in there all the way tight. I've got a little tiny gap there. So it's, it's not going to be perfect. Try and get it as close to, there we go, that's better. Clean up the glue. And this is probably the most tricky part is getting the tiny little bits of glue out of those corners there, especially this next inside one in between the two rails that are already set without messing them up. I 
like I said, you don't want any glue residue because when you go to stain, the stain is not going to soak into the wood. It's just going to float on top and it will color it a little, but it's you're going to be able to tell that there's some glue there. And it just doesn't look as nice. Now, since I have this other side over here, I'm going to go ahead and dry fit these in here to make sure that I didn't get a weird angle on this divider piece. And if I did, push everything back. These didn't come, come out quite as snug as I would have liked, so there's already a little gapping, but that's okay. We're not all perfect. We just try. Everything's going to get flipped and turned around anyway when I pull these apart to set them. And then the last one would be to, to set this, this last piece in here. But I am going to hold off on that. Um, because I want, and see dry fitting that one was probably a good idea as well. Uh, I want this one to set really well before I go ahead and put that next one on. So... Um, for now, we'll just end it there. You get the idea. You move on to the next one after that. Do that and move all the way around the table. Uh, I don't know if there's a set amount of chips these are supposed to hold. I just kind of um, went with the dimensions that I sort of came up with as I built this thing. And so I've got a short one here. I think it's about 60 plus two or three chips. And then this one holds 80 chips um, on in both rails. And I was pretty comfortable with that. You get too long, the chips want to fall over. And uh, my idea is I have a player here, maybe two if you play it tight, and then on around the table. It's not a big table, it's only a six foot table, so you can't fit a lot of people around it anyway. And so this is plenty of room for one player to stand here and play um, and, and have enough room for all their chips. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching Great Craps.